Today I'm doing a video that I've gone back and forth with myself for months trying to decide if I should do it. The only two times I've met this YouTuber. Her name is Gabiana, and look, here's the thing. First and foremost, yes, she's a freaking drama queen. I'm a freaking drama queen, so I'm gonna just put this out there and tell it my issues with her because I keep texting her, telling you to leave me alone. Um, wow, well, okay, I'm way more nervous than I thought I was gonna be. For my subscribers who have been here a while, who are so beyond patient and understanding with me when I don't post or film videos for this channel. I am so sorry that this is my first video back after like four months. Places like YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram are all places to not just communicate with others and present yourself to a bigger audience, but they're also places to document yourself if you so choose to. But with doing this, you are opening your past thoughts and opinions up to the public eye, and in some cases, even friendships or other things that you may hold personally. This in itself can lead people to either see how your character has changed over time, or for another majority, lead people to come across something that they might not entirely agree with, and see you in a frail light, which brings out people to criticize you and hold you accountable for your past actions. And in most cases for this, most people aren't doing this just to hate on someone, though I do admit this is the case for some people. But the reason why a lot of these people will bring up a person's past is to simply see if they still hold that same view of things that they had however long ago it was shown. Now as many YouTubers and content creators, I too face the same thing, kind of. I don't entirely agree with some of my opinions in my older videos, and nor do I like a lot of my past videos at all. And for those wondering, I keep them up because I like to look back sometimes and see how much I I've personally changed and grown. And if people want to criticize me or disagree with what I've had to say in those past videos, that's perfectly fine. I expect that nonetheless because of how opinionated I can be in some of my videos. But that's just the life of being a public figure. Not everyone is going to like you. But what matters with this is how you as a public figure deals with the criticism given to you and any possible slander or random shenanigans people decide to splurt out. And this is something that I'll later be going into more depth on because it relates to today's topic of discussion. So let's now talk about the person in question, Gabby. Hannah. Now, I know there's going to be a few people who don't know who she is, but for those who already know about her and her content, don't worry, there's time steps in the description if you want to skip past this part. But for those who don't know, Gabby Hannah was a fairly big Vine star, and during her time on Vine, she ran a YouTube channel that later would have both audiences from Vine and YouTube combined. Her older videos consisted of storytelling, makeup tutorials, vlogs, and relationship advice. The content she was making was pretty good material at the time it was being made, and this allowed her to gain a bigger audience than what she already had. Some might even say that she was on the road to success, which in hindsight was true because currently she sits at well over 6 million subscribers, a pretty good accomplishment I must say. And even now she still has quite a bit of relevance on this platform for both good and bad reasons. Her videos now though are of much higher quality and she tends to stick with making vlogs and on occasion she'll drop a music video, though her genre of content hasn't changed too much. Now from an outside perspective, I see her doing pretty good for herself. Her videos gain a pretty decent amount of views, especially for someone who's been on this platform for as long as she has. Not a lot of people can hold relevance for the amount of time she's been on this platform, so big ups for her for that. But as nosy as I am, I started digging into her channel statistics because I'm always curious to see how my fellow content creators are doing. And luckily, there's websites like Social Blade that let me see stuff like that. And when I started looking at her subscribers, I noticed something pretty off. Because through the start and end of 2019, and even now, she's been losing subscribers like crazy. In an entire month, she lost over 160,000 subscribers. In the month after that, she lost 100,000. And after that, it's been an ongoing cycle of her losing an average of 30,000 to 60,000 subscribers every month. This wasn't just on YouTube either. She was losing followers on both Instagram and Twitter just as much. And that's not something that just happens. So something must have been going on. There's also been a multitude of videos being made on her from that same time period. And me being the curious person I am, I wanted to find out why why this was happening. Why were there so many people getting such a dislike for her? Why did Gabby Hanna become such a big target? Let's find out. So 
So why do some people have a disliking or possibly a hatred towards Gabby? In a lot of cases, it's due to recent events, and in others, it's due through a chain of events. People eventually just get tired of someone's actions, especially if they lack some improvement through their past mistakes. So I thought the best way to find out where this disliking began was by simply looking through those past events and how they've all added up through time, and see how much Gabby really has changed. The first thing that struck me wasn't too terrible. I mean, people do it all the time on Twitter, but I can understand why some people would be upset because of this due to the fact that people at this time saw Gabby to be a comedian of some sort. See, Gabby thought it would be a great idea to steal some jokes, some even from fairly established comedians, and believe it or not, there was quite an uproar because of this, which later led from a response from Gabby in this video. But in this video, she mentions how some guy made a video on her, where he talks about how she has stolen jokes on Twitter from other comedians like Bo Berman, for example. Now her defense in her video is that she had no intention for copying those jokes, and some of the examples were years apart. Though later on in the video, she does admit to stealing a joke from Louis C.K., but it wasn't intentional either. I am finally addressing this whole joke stealing scandal. So basically, I'm talking about this video that came out on December 23rd. The reason I remember it is December 23rd is because it was my entire Christmas and New Year's was on my phone when I should have been with my family, just like obsessed with comments and followers and subscribers and just kind of my world felt like it was collapsing in. And this guy made a video where he basically accused me of stealing jokes and profiting on other people's content and building this whole platform on other people's content and said that I was making money off the work of others, et cetera, et cetera. I'm Bo Burnham and the wording was the wording is a little off, but it was like, fuck, I forgot the Titans, or fuck, I keep forgetting the Titans, or I forgot about the Titans, something like that. And then I had a tweet that was very similar, and he pulled it up. I don't remember if it was exact words or very similar, but he pulled up the tweets, put them side by side, and was like, look, Bo Burnham tweeted this, and then a couple months later, she tweeted this. And they were actually years apart. If you look at the date, it was either two or three years apart. So basically, <laughs> I, I didn't... I just didn't steal that. I, it's like either I creeped back on Bo Burnham for three years, which I'm probably the biggest Bo Burnham fan on the planet, but I didn't, I didn't do that. Or I saw the tweet and then was sitting on it, which was like waiting two or three years, waiting for the perfect moment to tweet it. That's not how it happened. I was just in a store and I saw Remember the Titans and I was with my friends and I was like, oh fuck, I forgot the Titans. And then I tweeted it, feed and laughed stored it somewhere in my brain and then when I saw it I thought it but even if that happened I never intentionally stole that joke this Louis CK bit the one that everybody like that's the one that keeps getting recycled over and over and over as like she steals jokes understandably so because I think when you look at the other ones you're sort of like okay that's kind of a stretch to say that she stole these tweets whatever but this Louis CK joke the second I saw what he was doing where he put that next to that, like mine versus his. I was like, holy fucking shit. I stole that fucking joke right the fuck away. Like when I saw the Bo Burnham one, I was like, okay, absolutely not. Like I did not steal that joke. When I saw the Louis CK one, my heart dropped. Cause I was like, holy fuck. I've heard this before. There's no way fucking around that. I heard it and I fucking said it. But I will say that it was not intentional. I think you all get the premise of the video though. She apologizes for having some of her jokes stolen and defends herself by saying that it wasn't her intention to. Also, I'm not sure why she had to make this video over 20 minutes. Like, a lot of it is filled with her rambling on about the situation. Gabby, you didn't need to make it that long of a video. But nonetheless, I do think it's also important to mention that she does thank the person who made the video on her, calling her out for this. She seemed to be able to take criticism in this video and somewhat accepted her mistakes. And I'm paying for it now, and I've paid for it, and honestly, I'm, I'm glad it happened when it did, as much as it hurt and as much as it sucked, because I just learned earlier in my career that what's right and what's wrong and now I can kind of pass that message along and for everybody who was defending me saying like oh who cares she stole one joke it's not a big deal thank you for doing that but it is a big deal and even though the video that was made about me was really cruel and it seemed to come more of like a hateful place than than like a productive constructive place 
it happened and it fucking happened and I'm I feel like there's more I want to say and if I think of more after I end this video then I will come back and say it awkwardly at the end but I'm fucking sorry to anybody that I hurt I'm sorry to anybody who felt disrespect disrespected and dishonored I'm sorry that it took so long for me to own up to this and talk about it and I've learned to not be that person. And I'm very grateful that I got called out. I wish that I could have been called out in a more private, respectable manner. I wish some, you know, somebody kind of could have taken me under the ring and been like, hey, like, this isn't cool. That's my battery. Hey, this isn't cool. Like, you gotta be more careful or whatever. But now I triple check everything. I like Google it in 10 different forms. I'm like, did somebody say this before? And I do my very fucking best to make sure that I'm not doing this fucking forgetting that I saw it or you know what I mean? I'm trying my fucking best. Well, that's not the case, sorta. With a quick glance, I came across a YouTuber called Doc Reviews, and it just so happens he was the one that made the video on Gabby. Now, he actually made two videos, which are now private, but one of them was a follow-up to the last video, which again, is private, so I can't show any of you what they said, but luckily, there's the Wayback Machine, which archives things exactly like this, and to my luck, Doc wrote everything we needed to know in the description. The Gabby Show falsifies a copyright claim in an attempt to censor me. Virtually every aspect of the complaints and erroneous. Big channels leveraging the popularity to bully smaller channels is a huge problem on YouTube. Thankfully, YouTube had the sense to declare my review fair use. I highly doubt that Gabby will see any repercussions from this unless people start talking. So Gabby, you say you're thankful that he made this video, but you also made an attempt to strike it down? You have an odd way of showing your love, I will say that. Now I couldn't find any proof leading to the fact that she did actually try to take down his video, but this does add some speculation showing that maybe there's more to the story we don't all know. Mind you though, she made her apology video after she got backlash for doing this. But what I find weird is that she never mentions the copyright strike in her video at all. Maybe she forgot to add it in, maybe she realized it wasn't the best idea and wanted to move on, or maybe she didn't want to give it any more attention than it already had. I'm not entirely sure, but I will say that it does strike some suspicions. Moving forward down the line though, does anyone remember Rice Gum? I do, and the reason for that is because the first time I actually ever heard about the both of them was when all the news broke out that Rice Gum had allegedly hit Gabby and broke her phone. But honestly, if Rice Gum ever wants to like live freestyle battle, like drop a beat right now, bitch, I'll murder you. Hey Rice Gum, I just challenged you to a live battle on Snapchat. Would you do it? Let's, no. Live rap battle, why wouldn't you do it? Let's, no, I don't Sorry if it looks like I'm crying. Um, Rice Gump didn't think that joke was very funny, and he hit me in the middle of a party and shattered my phone. I can show you that in a sec. I'm standing out on the balcony so that it doesn't, like, make... He literally, like, everyone was like, did he hit you? And I was like... Yeah, he did. Now this entire situation was a bit crazy to say the least. I mean most YouTubers respond to allegations like these in some serious manner, but Ricegum decided to do what he does best, and that was by making a diss track. Now before this, Ricegum did go on some news channels like Scarce and told his side. We actually have Ricegum here. Yo, what up, what up? <laughs> yeah, People so think I hit a girl, but I didn't. Yeah, exactly. So he DM'd me earlier today, he's like, dude, I didn't do any of this, this is all fake. So I decided, why don't we get on, him on for an interview? Um, so I'm going to ask him a few questions here, and let's see how he responds. So what happened between the Snapchats that Gabby posted where she approaches you in one, and the next she's claiming that you hit her? Uh, so 100%, people say there's two sides to every story, but there's literally only one side, though. Like, this is exactly what happened. I'm not exaggerating. This is exactly what happened, all right? Alex Wasabi birthday party. I literally moved to LA yesterday. I moved all my shit in. I'm tired of shit. It's 9, 9 p.m. or like even later. I'm like, I forgot. Alex hits me up like, yo, it's my birthday. Come to this party. And, you know, me and him are good friends. So I pull up. I'm tired of shit. I'm on the couch doing my own thing. I'm like, in the snaps, you can see me on the couch just relaxing, right? I'm on the yeah. couch chilling. 
Go watch her Snapchat. Before she came up to me, she had two Snapchats saying, oh, my God, Rice comes at this party. I'm going to go talk to him. Like, she was planning to approach me, planning to start stuff. Like, I was really minding my own business. So if she, so if she never came, like, came up to me and and did what she did and uh, disrespected me, I would not have done what I did. So I was literally sitting talking to some guy she comes up to me and she's like right scum let's have a rap battle like on snapchat i'm sitting there posted up she walks up and she's like right scum let's have a battle and you guys can see her first snap too i was like trying to play along because once again it was so awkward so then i was like eh, nah eh, nah so i did that super awkward tried to play along because i mean i didn't know what to do and then she posts that snap i didn't really like it and she takes out her phone again and snaps. And then, and that second snap where I was just sitting, like, speechless because, whoa, like, think about it. I was at a party. I was not expecting people to record anything. I was posted, and she comes up to me, right? So then I asked her, nice, so while she's posting that second snap of just trashing me, like, talking shit in my face on camera, and she says it's a joke. Like, how is that a joke? Like, she's doing it. But anyways... After she posted that, I was like, hey, can you not post that? Can you not do that? Like, I asked her really nicely. You can ask anyone at the party. I did not hit her. And there's actually proof that she has bruises on her knees before I quote unquote hit her, whatever. So she just make it up. I just saw that on Twitter. Yeah, that's that's pretty convincing. There's literally proof of her bruises that I supposedly did, but she had those bruises before. Then afterwards, Gabby responded with this video. Hi guys, I just got out from a night out with my friends. It's my friend's birthday, which was really nice. And um, I received some texts that Rice Gum was posting a diss track on me tomorrow. Um, I think it's very interesting that he waited a few days. His ghostwriter must have been out of town or busy, but he must be back. (laughs) Oh, burn. No, but it is interesting to me that he's responding to such a serious situation and such serious accusations with a diss track. She basically talked about the misconceptions surrounding the situation. This video is because I want to clear up some blatant lies that Brian has been spreading. The reason I posted this on my vlog channel in the first place, which I'll link that initial video below so you can catch the full story in real time and see what I'm talking about as far as like the evidence goes and what I actually said, I'll post that below. Um, Because I didn't want this to garner a lot of attention. I didn't want this to be like a main channel drama video. I just wanted to get my side out there because I knew he was gonna get his side out there. So I got my side out there as well. And I did it on my smaller platform because I didn't want it to become this big thing. But I don't know how people don't realize that rice gum has zero credibility at this point. First and most importantly, this is the thing that everybody keeps harping on. And he keeps going on all these drama channels and doing these interviews saying that I said, I said that he beat my ass or beat the shit out of me or punched him in the face. She's making it seem like I I broke her phone and I beat her ass. And the reality is I said the exact opposite publicly right away on multiple platforms. I'm not saying that he like, beat the shit out of me. I'm not trying to say that like Rice Gum like hauled me down and like punched me in the face. He didn't like beat the shit out of me if that's the impression that you guys are getting. But he grabbed me, like twisted my arm, I think I said that, and like held me down and I have like those scratches like up here and on my wrist and arm and like I had a big scratch on my leg. I don't want it to seem like I'm like blowing this up and like he like punched me in the face and like destroyed my phone beyond repair. No, it's like cracked screen, cracked camera, scratches and stuff. That night, in the moment, I made sure that none of my followers thought or were under the impression that I was saying that Brian beat the shit out of me or punched me in the face, anything like that. And he's going to try to paint it like I backpedaled and I'm trying to take it back because initially I used the word hit, which by the way, the definition of hit is bring one's hand in contact with quickly and forcefully, which he did, cause harm or distress to, which he did. But I did say it in the heat of the moment. As soon as it happened, I kept saying rice gum hit me because yes, when a man is on top of you and grabbing at you, it feels like, yes, he hit me. And showed how rice gum was treating this with a lack of maturity. One point showing that rice gum had made a video mocking her by scratching himself. Line number three, he says in an interview, with scarce, something along the lines of, I couldn't even scratch her if I wanted to, I don't have nails, or I don't have nails, I can't scratch. Bro, I don't even have nails. And then proceeds to post a degrading and disgusting video. No word. Watch. Oh my God, he hit me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, he hit me. Oh my god, he hit me. Oh. 
not only insinuating that I inflicted self-harm to frame him, but also proving that he does in fact have nails that can leave scratch marks if he wants to. Now I wasn't there, though there were some witnesses, and I'm not sure how much accountability they have, because one of them, well, one of their names is Romeo, and he uh, got caught up in some scandals himself. Anywho, this is what he had to say. Scum, I'm cool with Gabby, so this is completely non-biased. Um, I was sitting right there and I saw the whole thing happen, and I feel like a lot of misinformation is being thrown around, and also the whole thing's being overly exaggerated. Um, so basically, you know, what happened was me and Rice Gum were talking, you know, chit-chatting or whatever, catching up, and, you know, Gabby sits on the couch and sticks the camera in his face snapping, you know, and obviously, you know, she didn't mean any harm by it, she was just joking around. But she just keeps snapping and snapping, you know? And, um, you know, we're at a birthday party, so I feel like maybe it's not the right place and situation to be doing, you know, that kind of stuff. Because, you know, everyone's drinking, so it's not like everyone wants to be on camera and things like that. Um, so, you know, so he tells her, like, hey, can you, can you not post that? And I think maybe she didn't realize that he was being serious and thought that maybe he was joking. So she just kept snapping and, you know, doing more snaps, talking about the diss and, and on the video, you know, or whatever. And, you know, he, he asked her, I think maybe like two or three more times, like, hey, can you not post that? And she just kept filming and he just jumped up, you know, and went to reach for her phone. And she's sitting on the couch, he's standing up. And it was more of like a tug of war, you know, them pulling the phone back and forth, maybe for a few seconds. And then he snatched the phone out of her hand and slammed down the ground and broke the phone and then walked out. Um, was he being aggressive? Yes, definitely. Definitely more aggressive than he should have been um, for the situation. Did I see him hit her? Definitely not. Did he twist her arm? Definitely not. Um, he wasn't pinning her down. He didn't hit her. He didn't twist her arm. I, I would say honestly that this was just, you know, it was more of like a tug of war between, you know, grabbing the phone and he slammed the phone down and broke it. That's pretty much all that really happened. I feel like the whole situation is being completely blown out of proportion, over exaggerated. I understand, you know, everyone's upset. But, I mean, that's really what happened, and that's all there really is to it. Um, he left, I talked to him afterwards. Um, he sent $2,000, like, right away, pretty much, to pay for the phone, and obviously the phone doesn't cost 2,000 bucks, so, you know. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much all that happened. Um, I understand she was really upset. Uh, he's probably really upset, too. I think the whole thing is just, you know, I would, I would compare it to an aggressive argument. You know, I think, honestly, you know, people just get an argument and a disagreement, and you know it turns a little bit aggressive but no one was hit. He basically states that Gabby had kept annoying Rice Gum after him asking multiple times for her to stop recording him. Rice Gum then stood up out of anger and then they had a tug of war like match with the phone. Rice Gum then got the phone from Gabby and smashed it on the ground. Now I'm not entirely sure how much credibility Romeo has in this situation due to his allegations but I will say that it is still important to take what he says into note. Now Rice Gum doesn't admit twisting her arm like she states or anything else she said about him, but he does admit to breaking her phone. I've been doing shit, but no, so I take her phone, I grab it, throw, throw it on the floor, and run away. I will say though, that Rice Gum did handle the situation immaturely. It's expected because of his past behavior, but that still doesn't excuse the way he handled it at all. Gabby also acted pretty upset that this became an online drama and that this shouldn't have been online in the first place, which in her defense, maybe she didn't know that this situation would have been as big as she thought it would be. But she still must have understood that by putting this online, there was going to be a conversation at hand within the community. I'm not entirely sure what else she expected. I was ready to go ahead and stop talking about this online because I don't think that this is something that should be an online drama thing. Yes, I talked about it online in the heat of the moment. And Yes, a lot of drama channels are covering it, but I think that this is much more serious, which is why you notice on Twitter and everything, I've stopped talking. It's like ridiculously nice outside right now, so I'm gonna show everyone how to ruin a perfectly good day. Ah, the vlog squad. Don't any of you just love David Dobrik? That's a genuine question, by the way, because I've never watched him before, at least before having to make this video. My sister likes his content, though. Anywho, Gabby used to be a part of the vlog squad, and for her own personal reasons, she eventually left. People found this to be odd and thought there was more behind the scenes, and were curious to see if there was any drama behind her leaving. Gabby eventually did an interview with Shane Dawson and decided to simply state that she left because she was busy and wasn't completely comfortable with them vlogging every single day. It was simply just a lifestyle she didn't want to be a part of. Gabby also released a video titled Leave It in 2018, addressing everything I've avoided all 
all year. The video is now unlisted, but the premise of it all was to basically talk about all the speculation surrounding her in the past year and to move on from it. The first few minutes of the video was just her simply dyeing her hair and doing a little vlog, which was not needed for the video at all, but besides that, this video was not well received. A lot of people were pretty upset because she didn't really address much besides the fact that she has a hard time with all the hate she gets and isn't comfortable working in this industry because of so. I just, I feel like this entire year has been me seeing shit about myself and not talking about it and then just kind of like pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down, and then it piling on top, and it kind of fed into itself, and I'm a very anxious person, and uh, <laughs> it's just been a rough year for a lot of reasons. And I don't know where to start. I saw this comment on my vlog channel recently that was like, listen, I don't mean this in any type of way, like I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I feel like you don't belong in this industry. Like you're too sensitive, you're too fragile, this isn't the industry for you, and I was like, damn, true? Because I, I am like an incredibly sensitive person to a huge fault. It is so easy to break my heart. My feelings get hurt really easy. It's hard for me to brush stuff off. I take stuff really personally. Something that I work on, but obviously I'm not great at yet. And she mentioned the vlog squad like she did with Shane and talked about how nothing happened and all the speculation surrounding her and them is completely wrong. She afterwards complains how she can't handle the speculation surrounding the vlog squad and was upset that people kept digging into that by trying to find out if something did happen. But I think the reason this year felt so hard to navigate and heal from was because this wasn't people commenting on a situation this time around. It wasn't just, I think this did happen. I think this didn't happen. I think she's lying in this situation. Or I think she's telling the truth in this situation. It felt like people just hating me as a person all year because like nothing happened. And so the hate felt more random and poignant. It became just a game of people speculating on like my life and my relationships, who I'm hanging out with, who I'm not hanging out with. And it was either I did something horrible to be removed from this group of people or I removed myself because I'm so selfish that I don't care about them and I don't want to be a part of their life. I'm talking about the vlog squad, obviously. <laughs> and that's something that I've wanted to like talk about for a long time. I have started living my life in a way where it was like I can't do or say anything without immediately a list of things in my brain going but this could go wrong, this could go this wrong, this could, and everything could just go wrong. And you have these people in the industry being like, just ignore it, just ignore it. So let's just like get the vlog squad stuff out of the way. The truth is, between me and them, nothing happened. But later on in the video, I started noticing a pattern with her behavior and her mindset with all of this. She seems to really dig into everything, and I mean that in the sense she continuously tries to tackle any comment made about her. I know this because in the video, she talks about how people were tagging her in posts that included her ex-boyfriend, and were saying things like how she's desperate for his love and a variety of other things. And then little things that shouldn't matter, but like still hurt my feelings because I'm a human being. Like people tagging me in videos or pictures of my ex-boyfriend and making compilations of us together from my vlogs and people commenting on it being like oh my god she's so desperate and pathetic like you can tell she's so in love with him and he would never want anything to do with her she's flirting with him so hard it's so cringy he would never date her and it's like well we were in a relationship for the better part of a year and that's why he was in a hundred of my vlogs where you just pulled these clips and these screenshots so like do you really think that you would have all of this content of him and I just hanging out together if he was so uncomfortable and I was being so cringy and awkward and making him feel weird and that's something that doesn't even matter it's just like an example of so many people like tens of thousands of comments at a time being like wow look at her <laughs> i know that all of this sounds like so incredibly just first world problem to the one millionth degree but that's why i say like maybe i'm too sensitive for this industry. This is something I would consider small because I've gotten some really dumb comments in the past and honestly I'm used to it. And that's something you need to be comfortable with if you're going to make yourself public and want to be as big as, well, you are Gabby. You have a massive audience and with that you also have a large number of people who will go out of their way to say rude things. You're a public figure and if you can't deal with that then you shouldn't be one. And I don't mean that in a harsh way either, but in a way that if that's how your mentality still is after all these years of being a public figure, then that's something to be worried about. It's not healthy to try and respond to every single little thing. Sometimes it's best to ignore stuff and remember that a lot of the people on the internet are crazy. Though if something big does happen then you should respond. You need to 
simply divide what you should give your attention to and what you shouldn't. But all this talk about the vlog squad does remind me a little bit of Trisha Paytas, mainly because she was a member as well and believe it or not, she's the next thing to cover. So in November of last year, Trisha Paytas decided to upload a video called Why I Don't Trust Gabby Hanna. In this video, she basically explains how Gabby started to spam her in her DMs after one of her friends had told Gabby that Trisha doesn't trust her. She then later goes on to explain how Gabby had told Jason, a person Trisha was sleeping with at the time, and told him that Trisha had herpes, without ever even having this conversation with Gabby or having asked Trisha if she had herpes in the first place. I am making this video today for one reason and one reason only is because I want this drama to stop. This person keeps thinking I am talking shit about them. I get constant texts. I've met this person on two occasions. On two occasions I met this person. One time when she asked to come to my birthday party and I said yes. I talked to her for two seconds at my birthday party. And actually I think that's the only time I ever met her. Oh, and at Joey Graceffa's Secret Santa Party last year. Those were the only two times I've met this YouTuber. Her name is Gabby Anna. And look, here's the thing. First and foremost, yes. She's a freaking drama queen, I'm a freaking drama queen. So I'm gonna just put this out there and tell it my issues with her because I keep texting her, telling me to leave me alone, that I literally never think about her. And she literally responded, you talk about me all the time. I don't think about her ever. And I'm so sick of her sending me pages of text being like, why do you constantly talk shit about me? Keep in mind, she texted, Gabby texted my other friend Gabby from Pennsylvania and said, hey, you just hung out with Trisha, tell me the truth, that she talk shit about me? To which Gabby replied, yeah, she said you didn't like her. And so I was pissed at Gabby because I was like, why would you even like bring something like that up? I told you this, like, whatever. This is it, this is it for me. Like I said, no personal, nothing nothing against her. I think we have a lot of similar issues. So like, that's cool, but this is not cool because this is one thing I don't do. This is one thing I don't do. I don't lie on people's sexual health. Okay, so she told him, <sighs> okay. When me and Jason started hooking up in 2017, I did a video called like YouTubers I've hooked up with. She, by the clues, guessed that I was hooking up with Jason. I was. She texted Jason and she told Jason, or I guess, I don't know if she texted him or told him in person, but basically she told him, hey, be careful, Trish has herpes and you're sleeping with her and blah, blah, blah. Gabby, have we slept together? Now, why did Trisha make this video? You see, Gabby had decided to go onto her, her Instagram and explain that an alleged close friend of Trisha's had told her that she does have herpes. And that's why she told Jason. Because she wanted to be a good friend, and in her eyes, she thought it was the right move to go with. She also decided to run a few polls asking her audience if it was wrong to do. I have a genuine question that I want to ask the general public. If somebody tells you that somebody has an STD, an incurable STD, it comes from a close friend of theirs, a source, and then you find out that a friend of yours is sleeping with them. Is it wrong of you to say, hey, just so you know, I've heard this, don't know if it's true, but this person told me, talk to them about it, ask about it. Is that fucked up? I'm just genuinely curious. This isn't like going around telling everybody, hey, I heard this person has an STD. This is, you know somebody you care about is sleeping with them and you say, did they talk to you about this? Don't know if it's true, this is what I heard. Just be careful, check it out. Here's where I'm coming from. If I was sleeping with somebody and one of my friends knew from a close source of that person that I had a, they had an incurable STD and they had that information and weren't like, hey, just be careful, check it out, talk to them about it. I'd be fucking livid. Now, I just want to say, asking your own audience, the people who adore you in every way if what you did was wrong, is not a good way to find out if what you did was wrong. Because most of them are going to have a biased opinion and automatically support you. Now, this all went to Twitter and messages and DMs were leaked all over the place. Gabby had posted a tweet saying, I asked Emma Tino one time because I've been told for years the terrible shit she said about me. I asked once. Demontino was coerced into making scene the way Trisha wanted it to go. She's now on FaceTime right now, in pieces, apologizing to me. I love you, Demontino. We'll love you forever. Then to this was a text message which basically shows that Gabby wanted to know what Trisha had to say about her. And Demartino was acting as the messenger, passing along information between the two parties. But Demartino didn't want to be involved. But Gabby had eventually started to text Trisha, which caused quite an uproar between the two and had the both of them 
them eventually leaked all of this to the public. A while afterwards though, Gabby had gone onto Twitter stating, Over the last day, multiple people have reached out to me about being terrified of her. This is why. She told her if she doesn't make a post, she's gonna expose all of her secrets. She's living in fear and being blackmailed into defending Trisha. She does not deserve this. She's such a gentle, beautiful, generous, loving soul. My beautiful, amazing, sweet friend Demartino just called me sobbing because Trisha threatened her to make a post. She's terrified and broken. This is crossing a line. Demartino does not deserve this. Trisha then decided to threaten Gabby legally and sent an email saying, Gabby Hanna has been harassing me for the past few years on social media. Tonight she crossed the line, telling the internet I am blackmailing someone. Please see her attached tweets. I have all our prior conversations saved as well where I repeatedly ask her to leave me alone. I have made a video about this as I'm genuinely scared for my safety. And not only that, my reputation. Please can you communicate with her or her lawyer? I can't deal with this. I need re a restraining order ASAP or some sort of protection from someone slandering my name. In all my 13 years on YouTube, I've never had such harassment and someone lying and trying to destroy my reputation with blatant lies. Trisha then made a public statement about all of this, stating basically the same thing she did in her email. Gabby then posted to Instagram in an attempt to show that she had left Trisha alone after she had asked to be left alone. Gabby then went on to Twitter and said, Deleting everything and moving on, regardless of what other people say or may feel. I don't involve myself in internet drama. I don't pick fights. I don't expose people. I make videos where I do my chores and laugh with my best friend. I hang out with my boyfriend. I write music. I don't bring up others for clicks. In this case, someone made a video about me. I stoop to a level I rarely, if I ever stoop to, responding. I found myself in the situation of being someone else's drama of the week and it's exhausting and a waste of time back to hanging with my friends and making music and as much as i want to say this was the end of it it's not because this leads into something much more darker a tweet had arisen from an old fan of gabby's while this was all going on saying i think a lot of people forgot or i don't know that gabby hannah chose a rapist a rapist who admitted and wrote signed confession to the cops over her then best friend who was the victim and she didn't just do it privately but publicly that's always bothered me On November 16th, 2019, a YouTuber named Jesse Smiles had released a video titled Gabby Hanna Needs to Be Stopped. Now, before I actually get into talking about her video, I need to talk about the allegations against Curtis Lepore. So in 2014, a TMZ article had come out stating Vine megastar Curtis Lepore was in court Tuesday, facing charges of raping Vine star girlfriend Jesse Smiles while she was sleeping. TMZ has learned. Law enforcement sources tell us Lepore was arrested in October and released on $100,000 bail but it flew under the radar. During Tuesday's hearing, he pleaded not guilty. Here's the backstory. We're told Jesse flew to see Curtis in LA last August, but things didn't go well and they broke up. Jesse stayed in LA and a few days later got a concussion while shooting a Vine video. Sources close to Jesse tell TMZ Curtis then called her and offered to help her while she was recovering. The victim claims Curtis came over, Jesse fell asleep, and that's when he allegedly raped her. The day after the incident, Jesse tweeted, be careful of who you trust. Always be cautious for your safety. Be strong and don't let your guard down. It's pretty insane. Curtis and Jesse's relationship was a huge deal in the Vine world. They initially got in touch via the social media platform last summer and met in person in New York City in front of hundreds of their Vine fans. Curtis's lawyer tells TMZ things are not always as they appear and there are always two sides to every story. Another article then came out by The Observer and said that maybe the accusations are legit, maybe not. What we do know is that he took a plea deal on February 21st, pleading guilty to a felony assault and effectively ridding himself of the rape charge. Jessie had even released a tweet herself saying, Curtis pleaded guilty to a felony assault today in court. It is no longer going to trial. I am okay with this and thankful for it to be over. All right, so now that we all know that, let's get into Jesse's video. <laughs> 
In this video, Jesse basically talks about how after that fan posted their tweet, Gabby had then decided to go into their DMs and tell her side. Gabby basically stated that there isn't any proof that she and Curtis have ever collabed and only possibly contacted him one time before ever meeting Jesse. Um, this girl, her name is Deanna. She tweeted, I think a lot of people forget or don't know that Gabby Hanna chose a rapist, a rapist who admitted and wrote signed a confession to the cops over her best friend who was the victim and she didn't do it privately but publicly. That's always bothered me. So Gabby saw Deanna's tweet and she didn't like it. She felt strongly enough that she felt she needed to message Deanna and that's why I'm here today to share those messages with you. The one that started the conversation. She says, I'm genuinely trying not to engage with this stuff because it's gossip, but this is one that truly confuses me because I don't understand why anyone believes it. If I collabed with my friend's ex, especially publicly, where is it? Where is any photo, any video? It doesn't exist because it didn't happen. That man is not my friend, has never been my friend. I think I tweeted at him one time before I ever even met Jesse and that's it. So how this story is a thing I'll never understand, but I want to. Then out of nowhere, the conversation kind of flipped into something completely different. And rather than continuing on the original conversation or ending it, Gabby decided to bring up Jesse and Jen Den, which is someone I'll be talking about later. But she basically mentioned how the both of them started a hate campaign against her and that they said that Gabby had decided to collaborate with Curtis because he had a larger following, which Jesse then denies that she's ever said that. Then it starts. Gabby says, here's a long story short, and she starts talking about me. Now notice how the girl was not talking about me at all. Yes, it has to do with the man who raped me and her supporting him, but Gabby just jumps like straight into, okay, it's time to discredit Jesse. It's time to make Jesse look like a bad guy so that I can get this girl to realize that Jesse's a liar, that Jesse's crazy, and that I'm right. So it starts here. Jesse and I weren't friends when the allegations went down. We became friends after. Once we were friends, I literally never talked to or collabed with Curtis. For reasons that don't matter in my opinion and to not spread hate or rumors, Jesse and I had a falling out and I had to make a choice to stop engaging with it. Since then, her and Jen started a hate campaign about me, saying that I ditched her to collab with her rapist because he had more followers. I have never said that in my life, Gabby. I have never in my life said that you left me to collab with Curtis because he had more followers. Basically throughout most of the video, Jesse talks about how Gabby was spreading a false narrative about the entirety of the situation and later on talks about how they both have made story time videos on each other but in Gabby's, she would frame Jesse as a psychotic person. I'm just gonna bring this up really quick because I feel like it's a relevant thing. Gabby has and always will paint me as someone who is crazy. I am the liar, I am the attention wanter. Some of you know and some of you don't know that me and Gabby have done story times on each other. We have not said each other's name and we've tried to cover it up by being like, you'll never guess who this person is. But point is we've done stories on each other and I just wanna compare to you the beginning of her videos and how she describes me versus the beginning of my videos about her and how I describe her. I just wanna, I just wanna put those two and two together so you can see what she wants people to feel about me, what she's always, this is years ago that she posted, two years ago she posted the story time. She's always wanted people to see me like this. And I'll let, you, I'll let you see, I'll let you see how we talk about each other. Here it is. I also want to say that I haven't been friends with this person for years. This happened so far in the past and I have no bad blood with this person whatsoever. I wish her nothing but the best. And from what I see, she's having a great life and she's doing her thing and she's very happy and I am very happy for her. I don't really know her anymore, but I'm sure she's grown up a ton and so have I. Now, I have admitted in the past that I myself have had some crazy bitch moments but there is a huge astronomical difference between having crazy bitch moments and being a crazy bitch. Honestly, looking back at my time with this person, I do look at it with fondness because we did have a lot of fun together and she did mean a lot to me at the time. But sometimes it's hard to believe now here where I am in my life that I ever put up with this type of behavior, the amount of stories that I have. But that's kind of my issue that I learned about myself thanks to a year of therapy is I seek out like emotionally unstable, neurotic people and I try to fix them. Even if I'm not trying to fix them, it's like I feel like I need to support them and be there for them. So like I said, I have a lot of stories about this friend in particular, but I think that this is the first one where I was like, oh, you're psychotic. And this is how I introduced the situation about her. And I saw an email that apparently was sent to me while I did not have access, and it was from someone that I used to be friends with way back in the day. Well, I mean, I guess not way back in the day, but pretty back in the day. I wasn't friends with them when I was like in fucking kindergarten, but you get the picture. So I read this email, and in this email, this person mentioned this thing that I'm about to tell you guys about. And they mentioned it in a way that made it seem like 
like they were still like really angry about it and I was just thinking to myself like what the fuck are they talking about? I'm gonna tell you how this situation happened obviously through my perspective. I can't tell you how they saw it and I want you guys to be honest with me. Tell me if I'm in the wrong here. Maybe I just don't understand or don't see why I was wrong in this situation but I want I need you guys to tell me. Something that really struck me with this video though was how Jesse brought up the fact that Gabby is always preaching how good of a person she is but yet Gabby has also talked about how good people don't need to remind others that they're a good person. It's just really contradicting. So did this whole act like how she said in those messages, I love my life, all of that in her Instagram stories. Um, I'm gonna put a little clip here because wow. No matter what I do, I'm always a bad person and this is why. This is why I have three amazing friends that I hang out with. Don't talk about anybody, don't do it. Like I, I'm in my fucking house, living my life. I'm at a place in my life where I'm so fucking happy. Like I have great people in my life, like my friendships, my love life, like my house, my career, like everything's great. And I'm so secure in myself and who I am at this point that I'm so done with bullshit. And I'm so sick of like the shit I hear that I've said or done, like coming back to me and just like hearing the things that like people make up. I just, dude, I'm the, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I am somebody who, not to toot my own horn, but beep the fucking beep. I am so kind to people in my life. And to me, it's just, it's so insane because just in October of 2019, she posted this tweet that says, people with good intentions don't need to remind you all the time they have good intentions. People with good hearts don't need to remind you they have good hearts. Honest people don't need to convince you they're honest. The loudest people usually have the most to hide. The worst thing about this situation though is how Gabby had sent Jesse's and hers personal text messages to the fan and even brought up the fact that Jesse is on medication. But this was the part where I was like, no. That's it. The girl did not ask for this. Th this was not something that she was like, hey, so provide me with more information on what Jesse's like. But Gabby started sending my private text messages with her to this fan. And she says, like the girl had tried to bring me down so many times and in the meantime, look. And she sends a message, which I'm not even gonna read, I'm gonna put it on screen, but it's so dumb because it's just me talking to her. Like it's just me messaging her. So I guess her point of trying to show this is being like, you see like Jessie's mad now and she has no right to be because we spoke months ago. And then she says, yeah, she's so friendly to me, pretends to be sorry and smiles in my face, then does shit like this when I'm in trouble. You're implying something, like when you're saying then does shit like this, what did, what did I do? I put one cryptic tweet that I deleted hours later that I didn't even mention you or at you or anything. What did I do? She says she knows she's a liar is the thing. She's called me so many times saying she's been on meds and is better now and was sorry for everything, then blocks me out of nowhere and it starts all over. This is the most disgusting shit. Like, I swear to you, I cannot believe that she said this. Number one, I have never called Gabby Hanna and said, hi, I'm on medication. I'm so sorry for everything. I realized I was wrong. You know, you're always talking about mental health and therapy and you know, how you've gone through your journey with that. Like, it's so weird to me that you would bring up someone else's medication that they talk to you about in private, which no, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not entirely sure as to why she brought up the medication, but to me, it feels like it was a way to discredit Jesse because since she has to take medication, it makes her look like that she can't think clearly. Which again, I'm not entirely sure, but that's just a little theory. So after this video came out, two creators had decided to make their own video revolving around this situation, one being Jen Dent and another being Alex James. Alex's video wasn't too long or much of a critical video, but it was rather spent of him speaking a little bit about his personal experience with Gabby and some of the reasoning as to why Jesse made her video in the first place. Block. Bye! No, but you are unblocked now. Okay, I sent you the mess- I privately messaged you about your butterfly music video. Honey, I was here for it. Love it. I said, hello, butterflies. Okay? But what you're not gonna do is <laughs> sit back and portray anybody who was in my life before and we're no longer hanging out, they're the bad person. And even if that person is the bad person, you can't just leave it between you and that person. You now have to go around and try to pin people against that bad person. And honey, I have heard, <laughs> I have heard the trash you have talked about me over the years. I'm talking about oh, trash, which is fine. I know who I am. I don't care, but Gabby, did you not think that stuff would get back to me? <laughs> like, come on. Anyways, let's get into this video. In like a 24 hour whim. Like it was just like What? A, yeah, my friend at the time, uh, he, he texted me, he was like, move to LA. 
and I was like, yeah, like, I need to figure out, like, my car, because I had, like, a really shitty Buick Century. I was like, I just need to figure out a lot of stuff. And he was like, oh, whatever. And then he calls me back 30 minutes later, and he goes, um, I just booked a flight to Pittsburgh. I'm going to be there in the morning. Uh, pack your car. We're driving to L.A. You're moving. <gasps> so I literally just, like, threw Whoa. as much as I could in my Buick. The air conditioning didn't work. The radio didn't work. The windows didn't roll down. And it's we drove it, across yeah. the country in my fucking 2000 Buick Century. What? And now I'm here. <laughs> and story oh he's actually like a really bad person though <laughs> <laughs> you can't help if your brain doesn't tell you hey remorse remorse but it becomes your fault when you don't seek help you've now plastered everybody against the wall it's everybody else and then you start to deface people and then you start to privately message people to persuade their opinions about these people that you've already plastered to the wall so when jesse titled her video gabby hannah needs to be stopped that is what she is talking about the monster like Thoughts and behaviors and actions, not Gabby Hanna's career, needs to be stopped. His video basically showed a small glimpse of Gabby's true character. My problem is that here you are, yet again, talking about, oh, I wish well for my friends. If we were ever friends in the past, blah, 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 blah. But do you hear the things you say about people in your past? And speaking of being a bad person when you called me that night and pretended to be my hacker and you made me admit things about myself that voice like how and the things that you were saying and then you realized how effed up it was so you called me back and you were like oh my god i'm so sorry which i let it go i was embarrassed you did that in front of my friends were there uh my ex-boyfriend was there i had it on speakerphone because i literally thought that the person who had hacked me before, like you had said, was watching me this entire time. So, you are incredibly rude, but I don't think you're, you realize how rude you are. Like, when you came into my house, my friends, you guys know, I always had my friends staying with me. When you come into my house and you say in front of them to me, what are you running, an orphanage? <laughs> Imagine Brittany Furlon came over to my house when you were staying on my couch and Brittany goes, Alex, what are you running, an orphanage? How would you have felt, okay? Because that's how they felt. Now, Jen Dent is, well, okay, she's, okay, well, this intro of hers really says it all. Jen motherfucking Dent. She's Jen Mother fucking Dent. And quite a character, to say the least. Something that I've noticed with Jen though, is her almost like obsession with Gabby, and some contradictions as well. If you go onto her Twitter, the majority of things that you'll see are tweets about Gabby. It's a little scary, not gonna lie. Now our gal Jen got into some drama where she posted a clip of one of Gabby's vines, and to be honest, this find seems a little racist. I love running through black neighborhoods with my shirt off. <laughs> I'm gonna steal all of your baby daddies. <laughs> But there's more context to it, and whether or not if you think it's still racist, even after I tell you the context, that's still perfectly understandable. But I at least think it's only fair for all of you to have a full understanding as to why Gabby made this vine in the first place. You see, Gabby's vine was a parody of this vine. I like running through white people neighborhoods with my shirt off. <laughs> I'm gonna steal all your stuff. <laughs> Now again, if you still think her making that vine was wrong, that's a totally understandable opinion. But what caused an uproar with people is that after Jen had posted this vine, Jen decided to post a few tweets basically stating that Gabby was bringing up her old vines that were just as questionable, and even stated that type of behavior doesn't really phase her, and it doesn't matter. But Jen, you did the same to Gabby, and now you're saying that type of stuff doesn't matter? That's a bit of a contradiction. Now to be fair, Jen has deleted the vine of Gabby and gave the context of her own vines as well and realized what she did wasn't the best idea. Now Jen had also released a video about Gabby after Jesse uploaded hers titled Dear Gabby Hannah. In it she basically talks about her side of the situation and how poorly Gabby had treated her. I was a small viner okay I know that everybody thinks I was like this person on vine but I was a small viner. I was I didn't have that many followers, you know, compared to people like Gabby, Jesse, Alex. But I became friends with Jesse and Alex. And for some reason, Gabby, you, you just didn't like that. And I'm not really sure 
what your problem was with me. I remember um, that I used to watch Alex on You Now and he would like talk to me when he would see me in there. And I remember one day you were in his You Now and you said something like, is that Jen Dent? And I just remember the look on your face and I was like, I don't even know who that is. I mean, I knew your name. Other than that, I didn't know who you were. Shortly after that, um, you would start showing up on my vines under a profile called What's Eating Gabby Grape. I don't know if you remember that, but you used to come on to my vines and just leave shitty comments. Calling me all sorts of, you know, you're, you're a bully, you're this, that, the other thing. But for some reason, you just... Like, if you have millions of followers on vine, why are you coming to my vine and telling me what a shitty fucking person I am? Just like all the time. It was like nonstop. You'll never admit that. You'll also never admit that you made troll accounts and came and said things to me during the time that Jesse and I were not speaking to each other. And then, while I was doing my interview with you about Vine and how Vine had helped you in your life and what opportunities you had gotten from Vine, you took that as an opportunity while I was on camera to start telling me what a shitty fucking person I am. You went on and on and Jesse and Alex and Trish and all these people are right when they say that you talk in circles. You go round and round and round and that's why people are now addressing you on the internet because I'm not going to give I'm not going to give you the opportunity to talk me around in circles. Alex is not going to give you that opportunity. You sent me that shitty fucking text on Christmas Eve morning when mind you, I got sick when I was in LA. Pretty sure I had pneumonia, was never diagnosed with pneumonia, but I did go to the doctor while I was there and I was very sick. So on Christmas Eve, you send me a shitty fucking text message telling me that I'm nobody, I'm never going to be anybody, that I'm not on your level, that I'll never be on your level, that my life basically doesn't matter because I'm not famous, that my dreams have dried up and all died, and blah blah fucking blah. Something to take note of though is how she brings up replies that were addressed to Gabby on Twitter. You see, not too long after Jesse's video, a lot of people started to do some digging around. And in my opinion, Jen had really brought these tweets to light once again. It came out in TMZ that she was raped by Curtis Lepore. And you tell everybody, oh, go back and look. You'll Go back and look. Search Gabby Hanna and Curtis Lepore. You won't find anything. You're right. But surprise, bitch, when you Google the Gabby show, Curtis Lepore, a whole lot of shit comes up. So, yeah, you can erase your tweets, but the responses are still there. There's not too many, but they all have one similarity. They all add more suspicion into Gabby Hanna's treatment of Jesse when Curtis Lepore was being accused of rape. And that is exactly what these replies did. They made people both upset and suspicious. One person even replying to their old tweet telling us what Gabby had said in her now deleted tweet. I can't verify that this is true, but I can say that these replies are out there and it does add to the speculation. As much as I wanted to try as well, I couldn't find the original tweet as on every archive site, there was nothing at the time and that's simply because Gabby had deleted all of her tweets and nobody was there to archive any of them. Gabby had made a response video to these claims months afterwards in a video. She starts the video off by saying that she doesn't want to set a situation like this as a norm where people expose each other over personal and private experiences. She also states that she didn't apologize to Jesse privately and had only done it publicly. So a couple days ago, Jesse Smiles posted a video, it was a Q&A, and in the thumbnail she put the question, did Gabby ever apologize after the video? In that video, she says that she called me out publicly so she wouldn't expect a conversation privately. And this is me paraphrasing so feel free to please go check out the video yourself but basically she says that she put out the video because she wanted to set the example of how she should be treated and to defend herself and while I do believe that it's important to stand up for yourself and defend yourself I don't agree that personal matters and interpersonal conflicts should be made public or dealt with publicly. We're reaching a point in our world that frankly scares me. It feels like every day somebody new is canceled and it's becoming the norm to expose each other instead of to try to communicate or understand one another. I personally don't feel that making videos about people that you have a problem with is the example that we should be setting as the norm. So I want to start this by answering the question that was asked which was did Gabby apologize after the video? And the answer is 
outside of the public apology and statement that I put out, no, I did not reach out to Jessie. I didn't feel like I was meant to apologize to Jessie or that she was looking for an apology because I had already apologized to Jessie many times in many different conversations over the years. Later in the video, she also talks about how she has never collabed with Curtis and has never defended him and has never been associated with him, at least after the allegations. Or personally about it. So not that much later that night is when I started getting a bunch of tweets about how I ditched my best friend to collab with her rapist how I'm a social climber, and basically that I chose my best friend's rapist over her. This is a rumor that started five years ago that obviously Jesse and I had had plenty of conversations since. We had squashed a lot of our beef. We've discussed it at length, and I thought that we were moving on as friends, or at least friendly. And I need to take a break right here to just say I have never collabed with Jesse's rapist. And then afterwards, she talks about the tweets that were mentioned in Jen's video. I've never, ever publicly defended Jesse's rapist. I have one tweet to him before the TMZ story ever broke. That was four months, I believe, before the TMZ story broke. Nobody outside of their circle knew what was going on, especially not me in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, completely detached from the Vine world. I would never in a million years choose him over her, and I would never and have never defended him. In fact, one time I was at an event, an influencer event, and he happened to be there, and he tried to take a Snapchat selfie with me, and I told him to delete it right now because I did not want to be associated with him. I have have zero association with Curtis Lepore. Really quick, last night I got in bed and I really just scoured trying to find any stone that I left unturned that might show something that I would have to further explain. I just want to get everything in here and I found a couple tweets that I do want to address. So these are the tweets that I've already posted and it says he was arrested in October of 2013. I tweeted this in September of 2013 and December of 2013, but the TMZ article was not published until January 16th. 2014 and nobody in the Vine community as Alex James actually confirms in his video knew about this it wasn't public knowledge we all found out about it when this article came out this one as well is from December 10th 2013 again this is before the story ever broke so I had no idea at this point this one is saying that I revined a revine with Curtis in it for those of you who remember Vine you might remember when people would revine for revine it used to piss everybody off but basically we would just text a group of friends and be like hey let's trade I'll revine yours you revine mine and a lot of times we would just send each other links and just revine it. You were supposed to revine it as soon as it went up. So if you're doing something, if you're at work, if you're on the phone, if something's going on, you literally just click revine. So in that situation, somebody asked me to revine something. I revined it. It had Curtis Lepore in it. I unrevined it immediately and I flipped out at that person. So that's why I revined a vine with Curtis in it. It wasn't Curtis's vine. He was in somebody else's who I did revine for revine with. This one says, so she's just brokenhearted, not raped, moronic with comments like that. This this one I actually do remember. This was the day the story broke and I hadn't seen the article yet. Whatever he tweeted, I genuinely have no idea what his tweet was, but I remember I responded with a current Vine meme, which was a Big Sean Lil Wayne song, beware, beware, beware of a woman with a broken heart. So that was a Vine meme. For those of you who are on Vine at the time, you remember it. I don't remember what he said. Obviously it had nothing to do with the rape case. So that was that day before I ever saw it. The tweet is deleted because I was like, oh shit, I didn't understand the context of anything about this and that's why it's gone because I didn't stand by what it said once I understood the context of everything that was happening. This wasn't my tweet. This actually goes hand in hand with this. She then addresses the conversation with the fan and shares her perspective of what went down. Questioning myself like did I collab with this person and I completely blocked it from my memory. That's how much it was affecting me at this point that I started to second guess myself. So out of the handful of tweets that I was getting that night I chose somebody who I thought was older. Obviously, I was wrong. She had tweeted at me something along the lines of, I'm really hurt, I used to love you and support you. And then I found out that you ditched your best friend for her rapist to collab with him. Basically, you're a disgusting human being. I don't feel comfortable showing the majority of our DMs on screen because I know now that she is a minor and it doesn't feel appropriate, but all of the DMs are available online if you want to go find them. So the conversation started by me asking her, I'm genuinely trying not to engage with this stuff because because it's gossip, but this is one that really confuses me because I don't understand why anyone believes it. If I collabed with my friend's ex, especially publicly, where is it? Where is any photo, any video? It doesn't exist because it didn't happen. That man is 
not my friend, has never been my friend. So how this story is a thing, I'll never understand, but I want to. So this is me paraphrasing the conversation as to not involve her any more than she already is. But basically she said that there were tweets that I defended him when the allegations dropped. I said, can you please send me the tweets? And she said, I can't find them. She sent me a video of a girl twerking next to him with long brown hair. And she said, this is why people believe it because you did this video, do you care to explain this? And I said, that's not me. I sent her the link to the actual video where it's clearly not me. And she says, are you fucking kidding me? And at this point she's saying, you need to get your story out there. Like this is crazy because I'm Googling it. You're right, there's no tweets, there's no videos, there's no pictures. And I basically said, I can't fight every lie that comes my way and I also don't want to feed it or give it attention because it's just not true. And I basically just said, I was publicly best friends with her. She was in a public lawsuit with him. If I publicly defended him, don't you think it'd be somewhere? A story would have covered it back then. There'd be a screenshot, there'd be something. And she basically said to me, I, I can't believe that I believe this. And I have to be honest, it just felt good for somebody to to believe me. Like this is something that I've literally never responded to for five years. You can find these tweets for five years. I have no excuse for having a conversation with this fan other than I was hurt, I was angry, I was stressed about everything else going on and I just wanted to let off steam. And obviously now I wish I could take it back. I've apologized to publicly. I've apologized to Jesse publicly for these DMs and it's humiliating. After this, she had started to talk about the situation regarding Trisha and DiMartino as well and even talks about her side of things when telling Jason that Trisha might have herpes. Well, that I begged her to come to her house and write for her and that she said, bitch, I don't know you. You're a psycho. Like I'm not giving you my address. And this isn't a first time occurrence. And again, this is just embarrassing and petty. And this video came down to just me being angry and hurt and upset because from where I was sitting, I've offered her nothing but love and kindness. And for years, I've just heard these things that she's said about me behind my back and just frankly it hurt so again if i'm being a completely 100 percent honest here i was looking for a reason to confront trisha usually when somebody comes to me and says hey i just think you should know trisha said this about you i say i mean can i ask her about it and they say no please don't tell her i don't want to be involved so when somebody finally said yeah just don't get me in trouble i was like okay i can finally confront her about this and then that led to her making a video saying that i told everybody that she has herpes and have been telling everybody that she has herpes for years that I'm a mean girl, that I spread rumors about her, I tried to ruin her relationship, whatever else has been said. So this is the situation. I was with David Dobrik and Jason Nash. They were in my apartment and Jason told me that he had slept with Trisha. At this point, Trisha had long since stopped answering my texts for a reason that I didn't know because we didn't talk about it. And I didn't feel like we had a relationship where I should or could text her about this situation and ask her about it. It didn't seem any type of appropriate to text a girl who doesn't want to talk to you, hey, just so you know, I heard you have herpes and you slept with my friend. It just, I, I just don't know how that conversation would go, I guess. So when Jason told me as a friend sitting on my bed in my apartment, I felt the need to say something. And I never said that Trisha has herpes and now Jason Nash has herpes. What I said was I was told by a close friend of hers and I don't know why he would have a reason to lie to me that she has herpes. I don't know if it's true. Get checked if you're concerned about it, but have the conversation with her. What I've always told Jason and if he wants to, he can back this up. David was there, he can back it up. I said, have the conversation with Trisha if you're concerned. I never said that she had herpes or that he had herpes. I never tried to get in the way of any type of relationship. I told him something that I would want to know myself as a friend if somebody knew something and told him to ask her about it directly. She also apologizes and says that her original response to Trisha was petty. I'm heartbroken that it did make her sad. But once again, this is a situation that her and I had already hashed out. We had had the conversation. She showed it in her own video where she told me why she was upset with me. I responded. And after that, we've had pleasant conversations and it just hurt. So that's why I responded the way I did. Is it petty? Petty? Yes. Is it embarrassing? Obviously. Do I wish it went differently and that I handled it differently? Of course. Am I sorry that I hurt her? Definitely. 
She then talks about her side of how things went down with Alex James. So for the sake of just getting everything out there, I want to quickly talk about the Alex James situation. The situation started when all of the other drama was happening and somebody pulled a clip from a podcast where I tell a story about the kid I drove across the country with and the interviewer asked me, are you still friends? And I said, no, it turns out he was actually a really bad person. When I saw this clip, I immediately felt bad about it. I should have known that anybody listening could make the connection. There was a YouTube video on my channel where I tell the story with Alex of us driving across the country and that is why I reached out to Alex immediately because I wanted to personally apologize to Alex for saying that publicly. He ignored my call, I texted him, he said that he didn't want to talk because he was sleeping and I didn't hear from him again. A couple days later he put out a video. In his second video that he put out about me he said that he was just waiting for an apology but the reason I did not apologize to Alex is because I let him know that if he wanted to talk about it to reach out and he did not reach out. He just wanted to make a video about it. The reason I called Alex a bad person is ironically for something that he said I did to him. He did a video saying that a few years back I did a prank call video with Zane that I never posted because Zane and I did a vlog saying we took it too far, we're not gonna post this, and I never uploaded the video. Alex was laughing his ass off. Don't know, Gabby has recently been going on a tangent claiming that her channel is shadow banned and YouTube is only promoting videos that spread hate about her. Now, for those who don't know what shadow banning is, Google states it as shadow banning, also called as stealth banning, ghost banning, or comment ghost is the act of blocking or partially blocking a user of their content from an online community so that it will not be readily apparent to the user that they have been banned. This has left a somewhat raw taste in some people's mouths, especially due to a tweet she made regarding another commentator known as Pegasus, who is a person who simply covers trending topics that are happening in the current time frame. The videos are more to the point and in my opinion are fairly well articulated from time to time. But you see, Gabby had labeled one of his videos to be a hate video, even though the video itself serves some rather fair criticism in my opinion. The main point showing that Gabby can be a bit overdramatic, and whether or not if you agree or disagree with that statement, my point here is to show that what he said was criticism, in a more constructive way than hateful. Now I also want to point out that I don't disregard the fact that shadow banning is a thing or that Gabby herself might possibly be shadow banned, but I'm also going to say that there's a chance that she might not be, and a lot of people tend to disagree with the idea that she is. The reasoning behind this is simply because of the pursuit she has chosen to go with. One being a group of streams where she claims to have a bunch of proof that all of this is real, but in the streams all she does is point at a laptop and scream at her friends saying, Look at that! Look at that! No way. Look at that! Look at that! Does that make any type of sense? By doing this, you're simply driving people away from the fact that you are being shadow banned is a possibility because on one hand, you claim to have proof, but on the other, you don't show anything. This lowers your credibility and drives people away from your argument. What I've also noticed is a trend of you claiming to have known that all this stuff has been going on and you want to do this for the community. And that is why you're going down this pursuit of calling out YouTube and calling out all these drama channels who are spreading slander. Which in hindsight is great, but what throws me off is if you knew this stuff has been going on, then why did it take you until now to address it? Is it because it just finally happened to you? It just makes people look at this entire situation as if you're doing this for your own selfish gain. Whether it be because you might actually be shadow banned and you want it to be stopped, which to an extent is fair, or if you're doing this for relevance. But hey, you did say in one of your streams that you would go more in depth in all of this on your podcast on Tuesday. Bend myself forever, um, but I'm not going to make this start about that, but wait for my podcast on Box of Thoughts, which um, I know YouTube isn't going to show you, but on Tuesday, this next Tuesday, I'll be uploading um, a podcast about everything going on Twitter thoroughly and telling a full story. So let's have a little look, shall we? Throughout this podcast, she makes literally the same claims she did before. Nothing more in depth about this at all. Oh sure, you got some of her friends in the background, which mind you get sounded out throughout the majority of the podcast. You also got her swearing a bit more. Heck, she's even got a sponsorship segment. Oh yeah, this is totally more in depth from what you were going off before making this. But if you must know, she claims that YouTube rather pushes videos slandering her than her own content. I didn't even start a drama, uh, a problem or a drama with like all of these channels who are now tweeting at me saying that I'm attacking them. I went on a live stream to discuss my real issues with YouTube as a platform mm -hmm. because YouTube as a platform has 
hidden and suppressed my videos and for all intents and purposes shadow banned my channel because um my search results and my comment section has been inundated with words like rape and murder so because of the slander and the defamation and the lies of these channel channels my channel is now not advertiser friendly she also states that if something is proven to be slander then that video should be taken off youtube me with the lies mm -hmm. that is defamation and if i wanted to i could do something about that and i've never fucking even tried all i want not even trying to take up a, a problem with drama channels is for youtube to stop delivering the hateful content to flag the hateful content when it is proven to be false accusations, lies, and defamation. And while I agree with that, if something is entirely proven to be slanderous, then yes, that video should be taken down. But in some cases, it would also be hard for YouTube to determine if a video is filled with slander or not. Because the thing with your situation surrounding Jesse Smiles and Trisha Paytas is that a lot of the things being said surround their own perspective of things and experience with you. Which lands in an area that YouTube couldn't really decide as a company on whether or not if what's being said is completely true or not. Not. And with that being said as well, you claiming that drama and cheat channels are also helping the spread of rumors, you need to also realize in most cases, they're just simply showing what's there and giving their take on the situation. Even with that, I mean taking it off YouTube is one thing, but you still have other platforms like Twitter and Instagram, where Twitter itself tends to be a bigger place surrounding slander, and things tend to spread much faster there. My point here is that as a person, Gabby, you will never be able to escape the possibility of falling victim to slanderous rumors. Because because of how well known you are. You're a public figure who has recently done some fairly questionable things, which leads people to take advantage of situations like that. I'm not justifying slander, it's wrong, and it does ruin people's lives. But it's something that you'll have to eventually balance out within your life and determine if some things need to be addressed or if some things being spread are just petty rumors. This whole situation could have been handled better. If you've watched a drama channel spreading misleading information about you, simply make a video showing proof against it rather than screaming on Twitter that people are sharing false information on behalf of your name. Because otherwise, what you're doing comes off as attention grabbing. The rest of the podcast is honestly just a repeat of everything she's been saying on Twitter. This entire thing was pointless and a waste of time. But hey, at least it's now the most viewed episode on her podcast channel. Let that sink in for a while. Just, just think about it. Not making any claims though, just want you all to think about stuff. Because thinking is great. But throughout her treatment of sharing a lack of information surrounding her shadow band, one of her reasonings for this all was all the hate videos made on her, which caused quite the conversation to be at hand in the community and made people question if her response to these videos was the right move. And I think I know just the twat to talk about this. Thank you, Zaya. So I guess I have to finally talk about Gabby Hanna, someone whose presence has mostly eluded my attention. That didn't stop her from tagging me in one of her videos where she makes a heartfelt apology. I always found that a bit of a strange gesture, but I'm glad she knows I exist at least. However, the impression that I had received from the few passing glances I had given her in the past was that she had a tendency to be pretty hot-blooded at times, and I think that nature was broadcast throughout the situation that we're discussing today. Now, my good friend Austin has likely looked at the topics and provided his own insight. I trust he has at least. If he hasn't, tell him off or something. However, it's one thing to say whether someone's right or wrong and provide justifications. It's another to actually delve into a person's actions and ask why they feel that way or they behave that way. As Ethel mentioned, Gabby Hanna is not known for her phlegmatism, but at the same time, she's not known for losing her patience with the community and has regularly praised many commentators who she enjoys. So what motivated this outburst? Well, I think to understand that, you need to look at the greater environmental circumstances, in particular the notion that she was being shadow banned. Now, I'm someone who feels more skeptically inclined towards Gabby's claim on this front, but even with this in mind, the way she communicates her emotion feels quite legitimate. This is my career. This is my life. This is people from my hometown seeing lies and rumors spread about me. This is my relationships being ruined. This is YouTubers and my friends from this space will not answer my fucking text messages because they're be afraid of being swept into the drama. This is me being uninvited to birthday parties and Christmas parties. This is my friends unfollowing me on social media because they believe a, a false narrative. This is my fucking life. This is personal to me. So with this in mind, I'd say there are two theories that can explain this fiasco. The first one we'll call the frustration theory. 
What does this entail? Well, fired up and developing the theory in her head that she had been shadow banned, Gabby sought to find more evidence to support her case. In this instance, that evidence was the search results for what you would see when you enter her name in the YouTube search bar. When doing this, Gabby was met with a large number of videos, but many of them not from her, from other creators in fact, some presenting her in a rather unfavorable light. She clearly saw this as the suppression of her content in the algorithm, while simultaneously seeing it as a promotion of content that may be antagonistic towards her. Gabby is enraged that the first impressions people have of her are not from herself or from her own content, but from third parties denying her control of her own image. In this rage, she sees it reasonable to frame these videos in a harsher light than one might typically do because of the influence they have. Now, as Zio noted, Gabby provides no actual excerpts or evidence of these videos being slanderous. Does this mean that all of them are completely inoffensive? No, but it does provide the impression that she didn't actually watch them, as content creators like this typically vary vastly in their tone, and throwing an umbrella over them isn't typically the right way to deliver such narratives. But Gabby was just upset that she was having her voice taken away from her, right? Well, let's talk about the more cynical theory. We'll call this one the manipulation theory. Many people argued against this idea that Gabby was being censored on YouTube, citing the fact that she had been on trending very shortly before her meltdown and pointing out the absence of motive for YouTube to shadow ban such an audience-friendly creator, particularly given some of the other public figures they platform. Many felt that Gabby must have been aware of how YouTube works and must have known that the appearance of other videos in search results is merely an outcome yielded by algorithmic preferences. Therefore, this theory would state that she was failing outrage to force YouTube to offer her preference preferential treatment. Now, typically one would avoid this theory as we like to provide benefit of the doubt to people's intent. And when someone appears in a vulnerable state, the possible repercussions for a false positive are much worse than those for a false negative. However, some felt the elements of her story felt too calculated to be spontaneous, such as the so-called proof that she continuously proclaimed to be in possession of, yet never revealed, despite reading alleged DMs from reputable sources. Watch this. Ready? Mhm. Do you know what that means? Don't say it aloud. I'm just saying, do you know what that means? Yeah. Watch, I'm gonna show you something else. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. It's damning. This led some to think that the outrage was a bit more organized than it appeared and directed at channels critical of her with the narrative that she was being shadow banned conjured up as a PR stunt to boost publicity and suppress her critics. After all, it appeared to work. Plenty of people made more videos and she claims she received direct correspondence from YouTube as well, which is much more than most people will ever receive. With situations like this, however, it's hard to know exactly what goes on inside a person's head. It might be one explanation, it might be another, it may be a bit of both, it may be neither. In circumstances like this, I can understand why frustration may arise. In many ways, Gabby's reaction felt instinctive, regardless of whether it was well-founded or not. But on the other hand, there are just certain details which feel out of place and make people's skepticism understandable. Commentators play an important role in providing outsider insight into creators and the influence they hold. And although misinformation should be called out when observed, turning your wrath on them for the mere virtue of not being on your side is myopic and will typically only lead to more videos. Maybe that's what Gabby wanted. Maybe it's not. Austin didn't pay me enough to say anything more, so I'll just leave it there. See ya, bitches. Alrighty, well, this has been quite the interesting topic to cover. I will not deny that. But my biggest criticism for Gabby in this video is how she responds whenever criticism is dished to her, and how she almost responds to everything that is given to her, whether it be small or big. It is not healthy to respond to every single thing that is said about you, and in the grand scheme of things, I feel that is why she had caused quite the outburst in the way she did, because it all finally got to her and all broke loose. I do hold some sympathy for Gabby in these remarks because at the end of the day like all of us she is human i feel her emotional responses were genuine to some extent and of course that doesn't diminish the fact that there is a good handful of criticism which is all fair a lot of people being skeptical of her recent actions thinking her intentions are more cynical than good have every right to think that way as i'm a bit skeptical myself as noted much earlier on in the video but i do feel it is also important to point out that a lot of this might have just been an impulse reaction due to a decline in her mental health which a lot of 
of you twats online claim to care about, but will publicly jump on a bandwagon and will meme about her poor emotionality while she's in a vulnerable state. I do think that Gabby will come back from this though, and hopefully she will have a much better mindset from this, and the next time anything comes her way, she won't let her emotions get the best of her. Alright, well, I, I think that's really just the end of it. I'm gonna go sleep for another year or whatever now because life is just insufferable. But quickly, I'd also like to thank my good friends Raspberry, Sleepios, and Tro. Raspberry took the time out of the day to help me out, do some research, and even helped take some notes. She's on my Discord server, she's lovely. If you have the chance to talk to her, go let her know that she's lovely and you, you know, she's appreciated. And Sleepios, for those who don't know, was the drunk person reading the tweets. Big thanks to them. Still waiting for them to upload another video. If you think my upload schedule is bad, then you should honestly take a look at hers. And of course, you know, the biggest person here, Tro, he took the time out of his life to be a part of this, so please go give him some love. And finally, last but not least, I'd also like to say a big thanks to my Patreons. This video is probably going to be either copyrighted or demonetized. I, I don't really care nonetheless, I guess, but, but the people who helped me on Patreon, you know, you help me pay my bills. What, what else could I say? You guys make my life much more easier, which allows me to spend more time on videos like this. So thank you. I, I appreciate it a lot. You guys are and are the heart and soul of this channel. Alrighty, now, uh, bye. I, I don't know what else to say. Um, subscribe? Like if you like the video? I, I don't know. Just bye.